let's ask the root cause for the lack of control in your life. Is this mostly coming from this lifetime? Yes or no? And once they forgive and ask for forgiveness, we ask that absolute souls to please clear any entanglement that still binds them to this astral plane, like vows, contracts, promises, curses, candle magic, black magic, in forms of bindings. Welcome to my channel, Tools for Ascension by Wolfgang, and I am Wolfgang, and my gift for you today is this uh, guided meditation to heal control issues and gain trust. Find the perfect balance of control and surrender. So this meditation will address the higher and lower mind and clear karma. And you know, you can jump um, to the meditation right here below. So I'm a hypnotherapist that also works with life force and other very unique methods. Uh, so control issues, according to Google, is a general term for when people seem overly focused on controlling situations around them. So control issues could stem from high anxiety, you know, like a military, for instance, or, you know, obsessive compulsive symptoms, where this would be more like Rain Man, or, or other mental health condition. Um, that could be you, right? So, <clears throat> um, like uh, one example about control issues, you know, it happened, um, I was at the holy place, there was a big procession that was a Dwarka, and so I had to cover this in photography, you know, with several different formats, and oh my God, was I in anxiety, you know, very pushy, struggling to get the best shot, you know, for that point, you know, running forwards and backwards, you know, it's a procession, so, you know, for different angles, you got to move around. So much society, uh, anxiety, and so I asked the elder God brother, you know, what to do, you know, I, I should be in bliss here in a holy place. And he said, well, do the best you can, and understand that the result is then in the higher hands, you know, of divine power. So um, you could call this a bhakti yoga or surrender to God. No, but you definitely, you know, should be doing the best you can, but, you know, you can't push this to an extreme. Now, that is a control issue, right? Now, from an astrological perspective, your control issues, you know, are mostly governed by mass. You know, it's the warrior aspect, comply or die. Yeah, that would be the company motto. <laughs> And so whatever, you know, house your mass is in, uh, that's where you try to be controlling, you know, and pushing. And you can figure this out for yourself. And then, of course, also um, whatever planet is in conjunction with mass uh, will also be colorized uh, by control issues. And we will later on get to this. Um, there is always a higher vibrational control and there's a lower vibrational control, right? And <clears throat> then there is, of course, also this whole issue with control. So, you know, if there's over control, uh, there is tyranny. And if there's no control, uh, there's anarchy, right? And um, also another very interesting aspect, you know, to consider when we meditate on control issues. So, for instance, in India, the sadhus or the brahmanas, you know, the priestly and highly spiritual class, <clears throat> they are considered to be anarchists. You know? That means they would rule themselves, uh, thinking that they knew best. Um, it was like hands off for the kings or the administrator or warriors, or cops, you would say nowadays, or 
um, they would be cursed and then wither away. Uh, so if you're from India, um, you um, maybe you know anybody um, that would be willing to antagonize any Naga Babas? Right? Who wants to mess with Naga Babas? You know, very a dumb idea. <laughs> so, and of course, in controlling things, you know, uh, the question is, so who knows best? You know, definitely, uh, you know, big controversy in politics and policy and what to do best. <laughs> so, what is the source of your knowledge? Uh, trust, you know, for the future. Right? So, of course, you know, there is this aspect of surrender to God, the divine will. And this might be like the fool card in the tarot. And you also in India, you know, in Bhakti Yoga, you, you align with the divine will through love and certain meditations and devotions. Then, but the question is, what is divine will? Yeah. So, we have this... Um, this example of Abraham, you know, getting the command, you know, to go kill his son. So that's a tricky system, very tricky system, you know. So who is crazy and who is actually hearing the voice of God? You know, who is actually hearing the voice of God and not maybe the uh, ghost of Barry White? So that is the problem with mysticism, you know, the deep end that you can go down. Mm -hmm. Now, Immanuel Kant, the German philosopher, so he came from logic, uh, not mysticism. <laughs> you know, how to control or how to be free of control. You know, how you get um, your freedom. And he said, you have to follow, you know, a certain imperative and um, to gain freedom in your decision making and that is the question is what is everybody would do that mm -hmm. if you can answer this properly then it's probably good to go ahead so is it okay to take bribes and now you ask the question what is everybody would take bribes yeah you may not be in america uh, so of course even this pass you know of logical investigation can go off the deep end. You know, just ask the imperative of if you should have sex with your partner, and most likely you will not be happy with the answer. And <clears throat> when we um, talk about control issues, of course, you know, there is ego involved or the lower mind, or the higher mind. So, in the yogic understanding, the lower mind is associated with your lower energy centers, also called chakras. And the higher mind would be manifested through throat chakra and above. And uh, the heart chakra would be the area where you have a balance of the heavenly qualities and the lower vibrational qualities. It is the middle realm. Mm -hmm. So, when we have control issues, it's mostly, you know, lower mind versus higher mind. <laughs> the lower natures, you know, are a product of consciousness that came from the evolution in animals. You know, this is the basic animal instinct, you know, of survival, utilizing aggression and dominance. I mean, Darwinism, you know, the uh, basically the test run, you know, how well does the model perform in reality, in this 3D reality. And <clears throat> Of course, psychological speaking, you know, this is handled by the reptilian brain um, that is also, you know, called the extinctional or the dinosaur brain. And it's the lowest, you know, the oldest, you know, the most basic part of the brain. So the reptilian brain is, you know, based on autopilot survival modes, you know, of fight or flight. And 
you know, also the lower mind, you know, activates the need to procreate and to mate and to stay safe. And, you know, in, in Germany, we would call this the personality of us, you know, the in the inner Schweinehund, that's the inner hog. Right? This is our lower mind, you know, that goes for survival, you know, that bolts and, and so on. Um, you don't want to be there, you know, that's where you are a wife beater. <laughs> so now spiritually, you know, this lower mind um, houses all the negative thoughts and emotions. You know, like fear is operated from here, in which, of course, you know, triggers all kinds of negative thinking and behavior. And now the big kicker is I found that through frowning, you basically tune into your lower mind and um, these um, you lower um, emotions, you know, become more prominent in you. Okay. And we will talk a little bit more about this, but this is a very, very important point. So, um, about the fear thinking, you know, so that's why movies, you know, um, especially action movies, you know, are not good for use. And of course, the news, you know, it's all about fear. And video games, you know, it's all about, you know, combat and competition. So, um, they're all instill fear in us and trigger our lower mind thinking. That's the problem. It keeps you caught in the lower mind. And also the other bigger problem is that since the lower mind operates on logic, you know, the business world, the financial establishment, schools, governments, that means the Saturnian you know, instruct, um, constructs are mainly operated on this level of thinking. Right, the long walk through the institution. Right. So now, um, as we have been dumping on the lower mind here, you know, the survival guy, uh, so what is a higher state of mind? In, in terms, you know, of consciousness, it's just generally, um, I think that was even Google, described as important but hard to reach mental states. Hindu sages, Christian monks, and Buddhist ascetics, you know, all speak of reaching moments of higher consciousness. Satori is maybe one of the words that you know. And, you know, they do this now through meditation. And so meditation, in my point of view, is just you observe, you close your eyes and observe, you know, what's going on inside. Get a better idea. Not just be focused outside. Mm -hmm. And then our chanting. Now, uh, chanting is breath work, you know, which always elevates your mind through deeper breathing and intent. You know, you always sing for some, unless you do toning, and then toning is also intent, putting that vibration somewhere in your energy body. Another method, fasting. So, in my experience, and I've done some fasting, um, you know, there is two types you know, two aspects of fasting. So one is you purify, you know, but for that you need to drink water and maybe some high-end uh, vitamins, you know, so you don't deplete yourself. But um, the body doesn't have to expend energy to digest food. And uh, so that extra energy is being then used, you know, to detox yourself and it gives you a higher mental state unless you have too many toxins in yourself. <laughs> The other type of fasting is just to really change your perception. And um, this is kind of where you, uh, you know, chant like the Vedas all night and all day long, and you do not sleep, and you do not drink, and you do not eat, you know. So after some time, through sleep deprivation, um, you know, you start dreaming with your eyes open. I've done it several times. It's, I mean, you don't want to drive and operate heavy machinery doing this. And it's quite chaotic. Um, but, uh, you know, it's uh, better than nothing. But uh, then, uh, so it's not really, you know, something uh, that you want to do all the time. <laughs> it's kind of a sledgehammer method. 
and then also you know through pilgrimages you're supposed to connect um, through your higher mind and well what uh, do i know about pilgrimages well in general uh, when you uh, climb mountains or go to holy places there is some authority like walking and being out uh, outside you know, there and um you know up on mountains for instance and there is more life force there upflow of life force so um, let's say when you go to a pilgrimage point in general you know you have been outside you have been purified you have more life force and um, there is more life force there through you know the upflow of telluric energies and yes you know your higher chakras get activated you know by just being this upflow of energy and you get into this and you have higher consciousness again you can't take this with you you know for many people this is maybe the best thing they ever had in their life but um, you know uh, that's just uh, an exception you know this is not how we live most of our life Ah, so again, the higher mind is just basically, you know, heart chakra and up. So when the main of your energy is up there, uh, then, you know, the higher mind is activated. And um, that is, of course, the entryway to genius ideas, you know, to creative powers, in, in innovative ideas, you know, solutions. And uh, so your intuitions, you know, communicate to your higher mind and um, so i use this principle constantly you know in past life regression and other spiritual healing work and there's always guidance when um, you open your higher chakras and, and ask questions and um, i knew a few geniuses and maybe also half geniuses in my life and um, they got their in intuitions you know, when their crown chakra was open, with some the crown chakra was open, and with one all the time. Uh, that was very impressive, he was very saintly. You know, and with some it, you know, was much of the time. And of course they were also educated, uh, but the intuition, you know, came, you know, from the higher dimensions. And, <clears throat> now of course, on the other hand, so many <laughs> spiritual experiences in our life are illogical because uh, they are not always linear or concrete that is our lower mind that tends to analyze and the lower mind operates according to the newton's worldview you know, which is like grossly materialistic. You know, everything is seen in terms of billiard balls, kinetic energy, chemical reactions, so to say. You know, and of course, spiritual phenomena <laughs> cannot be described in this. You know? uh, spiritual phenomena have to be um, understood in terms of quantum physics. You know, Newton's physics locks you into gross materialism you know, of the world. In quantum physics, yeah, you know that your mind can affect somebody over there in the other end of the world instantly. You know, and I show this to my clients, you know, for one of the first things I teach them over Skype is, you know, how chi can just be transferred, you know, without any time lag and distance lag. Mm -hmm. uh, very important, you know, to understand. Uh, also, uh, you know, <laughs> when we have a lower mind and a higher mind, the question is, who is in control? You know, and so most people need to break the habit of hanging out in their lower mind. And I say it again, most people need to break the habit of hanging out in their lower mind. And you know how this looks like? A new frown. You know, or not smiling, you know, you're hanging out in your lower mind. You know, just um, smile and then frown and see how it's different, you know, between those two states. You know, go back and forth a couple of times now. Smile, everybody. See how that feels. And now frown. And smile 
and frown and smile. Hey, let's keep it there. And I hope you could feel the difference. <clears throat> so ultimately, you know, the final <laughs> ideal place <clears throat> is to clear and, you know, the solution to control issues is to clear the lower mind of all drama and trauma. And so then, you know, once that has been done, you can begin to tap into the higher mind to receive answers and guidance. You're not constantly, you know, drawn by, ah, no, no, this isn't happening, here's a friend of me, man, you know, you just, you know, there is peace on the lower levels of your being, and you can just, you know, focus on the more lofty ideas. And so when you really, you know, allow the leadership of your higher mind, then many profound changes can happen in your life. You know, the lower chakras, they just want more of the same. You know, whatever they had before. Of course, <laughs> imbalance <laughs> occurs, you know, um, because people tend to primarily live in the higher mind or in the lower mind. So higher mind, if you just, most of your energies, you know, uh, are heart chakra and up, you are a space cadet. And many of my clients, they're just spiritually super gifted, and then uh, many of them, you know, have a hard time, you know, um, paying for their rent, you know, and having a decent job that makes them happy. And then we always find, you know, the foot chakras are clogged up, the root chakra is clogged up, and they're just living in their higher mind. So, you know, when you have to have, you know, your lower chakras activated to live in balance. So, on the other side, <laughs> When you are only have, you know, your lower chakras activated, your animal side, um, and the heart chakra and higher is closed, you know, then you are a gross materialist. You know, you may have lots of money and power, physical power and influence, strong body and no higher appreciation <laughs> for beauty and other things. Right? So the easiest way, you know, to stay in your higher mind is smiling. You know, and then um, maybe even breathing into your crown chakra, if you ask me. Yeah. And <clears throat> um, the, of course, the lower, you know, um, the lower chakras, they, again, they're like uh, bring you in survival issues in fear. And that is not generally a good idea, you know, to operate from this. Of course, you don't want to play on the highway, you know, I mean. A certain logic has to be applied. You know, there's always a deep end. <laughs> so, you know, the balance is achieved, you know, when you're focused in your heart chakra. You know, this is where your spiritual aspiration, and, you know, like let's save the world <coughs> and uh, end poverty and suffering has to meet, you know, the demands of the body, of needing food, of needing shelter, mm -hmm, and everything else. You know, this is where the angel and the beast meet, and uh, you have to have this balanced meeting ground. Now, let's just, you know, go to different types of control, and you've probably seen yourself in one of those following. So we have, you know, the petty tyrant type. You know, you might have had a controlling tiger man, you know, and that didn't allow you, for instance, to have your favorite football team logo tattooed on your forehead. You know, who knows what, you know, her motives were, but most likely, you know, lower chakra control. Mm -hmm. And, of course, um, you know, many times we have the controlling drill sergeant dad. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that is also, you know, a drill sergeant, that is a lower, <laughs> lower chakras, you know, it's not based on enthusiasm or just, you know, fun cooperation. You know? It's definitely a very uh, yeah, negative system as such. And so are you treating your body like a drill sergeant, for instance? You know, so some, you know, people that do hardcore sports, you know, they're very tough on their body. And then, of course, you know, you hurt yourself. You know, um, 
you know, so uh, I prefer um, the more um, like a loving approach, you know, a very loving approach as if your body is your best friend, you know, so you feed them nicely or her nicely, treat her nicely, exercise, yeah, you know, your body likes to exercise like a dog likes to, you know, run around, you know, so give it you know, some nice food and some nice fun dance, you know, and uh, anyhow, uh, you know all that already. And so, and of course, you know, too much discipline, you know, makes you emotionally, of course, tight as a drum. You know? So, uh, you don't want to, you know, uh, go into too much discipline. And, of course, you know, on the other hand, you know, we have uh, too much discipline and then we have low impulse control, you know, where you abuse your body, like as you, you know, as an all-you-can-eat buffet. And, or like an amusement park. Uh, so, you know, again, uh, there has to be a balance, you know, between um, those worlds. Uh, there's always more than a duality. Anyhow, uh, maybe you had a permissive hippie parents uh, that set no boundaries. And, you know, you went the opposite way, you know. You needed control boundaries to feel safe possible, you know, that you're trying to balance something in your life, you know, one reason to be over-controlling. And, um, and then many of us, you know, when they had petty tyrant parents or teachers and masters or husbands, <laughs> they gave up control, you know, that was the only way to survive, you know, without, you know, being badgered, you know, this was a survival issue. And, um, well, you know, and then when that was in the past lifetime, uh, maybe, uh, you know, they start uh, micromanaging others or themselves and have a hard time delegating duties. And again, it's a spiritual issue then in that case, if it's past lifetime, but definitely, you know, animal consciousness. But, uh, you know, of course, then also, you're not controlled only by people but also by social customs. And, uh, very, very important. Um, you know, especially, you know, in past life regression, oh my God, <laughs> so many healers, you know, they got killed, burned, tortured, raped, you know, drowned, um, because they were dancing out of line with their opinion. And, uh, so uh, there, you know, um, also, you know, control issues or giving up control, you know, can really uh, be strongly influenced by past life ghosts that are still stuck around this trauma. And, and of course, in social customs, we have, you know, also, uh, like, uh, what do you think about women's emancipation? Well, I have to ask my husband first. You know, this um, was um, the ideal lady uh, maybe 40, 50 years ago, right? Social customs um, can be, you know, quite constraining, a big control issue. And so in many times, you know, we find the uh, root cause, you know, for control issues in past lifetimes. You know, either where we had no control of our boundaries, like a slave, you know, or we had lots of control and it turned out bad. You know, as kings or as military leaders, you know, we just went gung-ho and went into a, like a booby trap, you know, into a, a, yeah, a trap, you know, or other things. I have seen it, you know, in so many lifetimes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, <clears throat> now, where do we give up control? You know, well, military, you know, big, big place in military. So in so many lifetimes, you know, um, people are soldiering and then, um, you know, they sign up and then they have to do horrible acts, you know, like exterminate whole populations, rape and pillage. You know, instead of having a cushy job, you know, you are ordered to turn into a monster. And then also, you know, you get cursed you know, by their shamans or spiritual people. You know? So a big, big issue, you know, giving control over to others. And 
but it's misused, you know, so many times. You know, even had a major uncle, you know, who had a huge ego. You know, you don't want to have people that are powerful like that, that can send people to your death with a big ego. You know, not good. And uh, so, yeah, also sometimes in magic, you know, we had too much control. I've seen it in past life regressions where like uh, one person, you know, got mad at the village and cursed the village and then the whole village died. Yeah. So, you know, this person had so much control, didn't know, and then it gave control up, you know, and then became like a victim, like prostitute, slave, you know, a bitch, so to say, to others, you know, for many, many, many lifetimes. And there's also, um, you know, the guru and master control issues, submission, and um, very important, you know, thing to consider. And also, you know, extremely <laughs> controversial. <laughs> So, um, you know, there are generally two, you know, guru systems or two guru spiritual teacher systems. You know, one system, you know, prides itself of being exactly, you know, as the system, you know, was originally intended to. You know, you follow like in Hinduism, it's called a guru parampara. So you just repeat pretty much word for word what you were taught. No bias, you know, you know like a parrot, you repeat. And, um, of course, there are problems with this, you know, that uh, the meaning gets lost or it's not applicable to the time. And then, um, you know, there is the other one where, well, you have to understand the essential teachings, you know, of your system, but you have to adapt it to the local times, you know, time and custom change. And so you have to be flexible you know, <laughs> to make sure, you know, people can follow this. You know, and of course we have this uh, split here in Hinduism. We have this split in um, the Muslim world. You know, very very important point. Um, so in Hinduism, this would be an acharya, somebody that adapts the tradition, you know, to modern times, and then probably simplifies and mass produces it. You know, like. Uh, what do we have? You know, uh, you know, you have all these different yoga systems that came over, you know, from India to the West, like transcendental meditation. You know, they were simplified form of Hinduism for beginners, right? And um, now also another thing <laughs> about control, uh, you know, very important point is authoritarian control, and so. Um, you know, there are, you know, ways of control and one of them is authoritarian and, you know, basically uh, that approach is you do so because as said though and without explanation, you know, that keeps you obedient and dumb. You know, so if you bring up your kids, you know, and so, uh, you know, putting this and this on, this close, you know, uh, why? It's because I said so, you know, and do it, or I smack you around. You know, this is an unauthoritarian control, and the child never learns, you know, the reasoning behind. You know, the only reasoning is, is having, if I don't do this, I get punished. And you don't learn much about the world, that's just the world of fear. You know, that keeps you in your lower mind. So the other, you know, way, and this came up in Germany, <laughs> I would say, yeah, more than 50 years ago, and that's the anti-authoritarian education. And there is like, basically, you know, you learn yourself, you know, and you find out, you know, why to do this or how to do this, you know, you do this, or at least you explain, you know, please do this for these and these reasons, you know, or make your own choice and then you see how that works out for you. <laughs> you know, the oven is hot, you know, and maybe you can even show the child, hey, with your hand, you know, yeah, this is getting hotter and hotter, yeah, you don't want to touch this, you know, and then it makes its own decisions, you know. Most likely it will not touch the own. You worked very well without trauma with my son. So, um, <clears throat> but, you know, in this way, you know, you have a more self-learning, a smart, you know, mechanism here. 
instead of programming detail by detail, you know, do this or that, or I smack you, you know, it's kind of, well, try this out, try that out, and then use the best way. You know, we have this now in self-learning mechanism for robots and artificial intelligence. Uh, now, another a big controller in our life, <laughs> again, is tradition, social custom tradition. So animals have instincts. You know, they're mostly governed by instinct. Yeah, they have maybe some choice here and there. And some, you know, animals have personality, you know, on all levels. Rabbits have personality, of course. Dogs and cats have personality. You got to be pretty dense, you know, not to see this. <laughs> but also, you can see that in, in large amount, you know, they are governed by instincts. And of course, we also know that humans are governed by instinct. But also, you know, a lot of the instincts are not there, and there is where culture and tradition comes in. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, all these cultures and traditions are nothing but control mechanisms, you know, and that is why we challenge traditions, you know, to get rid of us does not work anymore. You know, that's why you're here. You know, um, you know, so uh, have control in the right way. So to get rid of what doesn't work anymore, that's like the Shiva project. You know, the process, the wrecking crew that takes, you know, away, you know, the stuff that doesn't work anymore. And then you have, you know, space for the new stuff. And that would be the new codes, and in, in Hinduism, that would be the Brahma, the creation process, you know, where you update. All right, um, enough talk now. Um, you know, it's time to meditate, so uh, find a nice place. Um, some of you want to lay down, and then, you know, you're probably going to pass out. It's not going to be as intense. Um, but it's better than nothing, and you can go to sleep. Um, the other one is that you set up in an office chair and have your feet on the ground. Um, some of you may be cross-legged and have a rolled up blanket under your back. It's going to be a lot more comfortable. You don't want to have any back pain or bust your knees up. You know, not, not good. Not very much nirvana when your back hurts. <laughs> And so, yeah, close your eyes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if you're on a podcast, also, you know, stop driving or, you know, change the music. This is going to space you out so much. You know, very dangerous, you know. So no pot, no driving or heavy equipment, heavy machinery. Please, please, please. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, close your eyes and smile. Smile, smile, smile. Very important. You know, we're tuning into the higher mind. And now we ask Absolute Source to completely protect us during this guided meditation, of course, afterwards too, you know, from any negative influences, from beings that are predatory, mm -hmm. and uh, also from any dark energies that are floating around, mm -hmm. to completely protect us, yes, so that only loving energies can get to us. Mm -hmm. And please transmute anything negative that's already in our system or attached to us, you know, out of grace, out of mercy. Um, 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 and to breathe, just nod your head, smile. And you also ask that everything that happens in and from this session here is going to be for the highest good and divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes. Um, And we also ask that we use our time and energy in the most effective, efficient way, you know, getting completely focused on the voice, no distractions, just completely going deeper and deeper and deeper, being completely safe, being completely safe with love and connected to source. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, just imagine that you shapeshift your legs and your root chakra into deep, strong roots that just flow into the earth, 
Ah, it feels so good connecting with the earth goddess in those roots. It's just extension of yourself. No need to visualize them in all details, it's more feeling the connection. Uh, you can imagine like a pyramid, you know, you start with the pyramid head and then you just go down. Deeper and deeper as your roots just swindle out. Mm-hmm. And smile like an idiot and on the inhale pull her love into your heart. As deep as you can and then push your love through those roots deep into the earth. Deep, deep, deep inhale and then a deep exhale. And you want to breathe at a speed that you can hear the air flowing through your nostril. And you want to keep your mouth closed unless you sit outside. You know, in nature it's fine to keep your mouth open, though I would keep it closed there too. And that way you do not divert any chi from the chakras that you breathe through. Mm -hmm. So back and forth between earth and you. And we ask Absolute Creator to please clear any resistances and blocks that are between you and Goddess Earth. Whether from your own in this lifetime, from past lifetime, or created by your ancestors, we like to have as much cleared as it is possible right now and for the highest good. Um, make sure you agree, smile, and deep. Breathing. You know, you want to send so much love deep, deep, deep into the earth. Mm-hmm. And we ask for another cleansing of all the hidden stuff that's still blocking you from completely connecting with your earth. Any cloaking spells remove, any technologies remove, any camouflage remove. Any shackles and rings removed. And make visible any other trickery like entities, mid-dis direction, hidden agenda. Clear anything that blocks the connection with the earth goddess. Amen. And also bring any offenders, you know, that block this um, to divine justice if necessary. Amen. 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 No, we also asked for our expert ascension teams that are coming from love and light that have been approved by our high self and by our soul, you know, to surround us now Mm -hmm. and also to make sure that everything that happens here is going to be for the highest good in divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes. Amen. And here, here they're coming. It takes about four seconds, four or five seconds. And now pull in their love with your breath from all around. They're standing in a circle around you. Smile, smile, smile. And on the exhale, you send your love to them. And if you like to have any resistances between you and them, this could be by magic, technologies, toxicity, whatever it is, we like to have it cleared as much as possible right now by the divine beings of love and light. Um, uh, now start pulling the love from heaven and earth you know, into your heart. Uh-huh, as if you do you know already from the earth now with the heaven as if you have a big funnel on top of your head yeah just pull it in from both sides and on the exhale expand that love around your heart as if you're blowing up a balloon that's filled with love mm-hmm. pink tacky love yeah Right, nice smile. Mm-hmm. And you like to have any resistances towards love, you know, trauma, drama, broken heart, vows not to love anymore because it hurts so much. You like to have that cleared, please, as much as possible. 
and an and and. That takes a few seconds here. Okay, it's time to kick in now. Smile, 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 smile. Mm -hmm. Ah, there we go, good. Mm -hmm. And now for the rest of the meditation, just pull in the love from heaven and earth into your heart mm -hmm. and then just let it flow wherever it wants. Just focus on pulling that love in mm -hmm. and you just let it go, but really pull it in deeply. Mm -hmm. And now um, I'm going to show you, you know, how to communicate with your subconscious or with your higher mind, so to say, mm -hmm. and with the yes and no answers. So the yes will be a flow of energy from the heart to the head. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you, it will feel like this. One more time, and uh, if you couldn't feel it, you asked your spirit guides uh, to make it a lot stronger for you. It would feel like this. Good. And to know, there would be a feeling of the flow of energy from the heart to the feet. It would be like a downer, and it would feel like this. If you couldn't feel this, I'm asked one more time, let's make it a little stronger. It would feel like this. Yeah, kind of like a downer. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's ask your high self or your highest guidance to give you a clean yes now. Amen. If that wasn't strong enough, you know, just have a dial there and just turn it all the way up. And he asked your high self to give you a much, much stronger yes now. Amen. And now ask them to be given a clean no now. Amen. Great. And now ask, yeah. do most of your control issues come from your lower mind? Yes or no? And let's ask one more time because you're new to this. Do much of your or most of your control issues come from your lower mind? Yes or no? And let's see, let's ask, are many of your control issues coming from your beliefs? Yes or no? Now the next question is, are most of your control issues coming from your feelings? Yes or no? And now we ask, are most of your control issues coming from your thoughts? Yes or no? And now ask, are most of your control issues coming from this life? Yes or no? And now the opposite question, are most of your control issues coming from past lifetimes, yes or no? And you probably had strong this life trauma that affects your control issues. So let's ask your higher guidance. Mm -hmm. What happened in this lifetime to affect your control issues?
And let's say, you know, um, let's go to three incidents. The most important one, what is that? And what happened there? Were your boundaries violated? Were you blamed or constantly criticized? Were you let down by others and now keep control for yourself? And now call that aspect, you know, that was, you know, hurt around control issues in front of you. This might be a six-year-old or five-year-old or a 12-year-old that got bullied in the schoolyard, you know, doesn't matter which one. You can always do later on more to get others, but that the one that needs the most help now, let's call this one forward. Amen. And now pull as much love from heaven and earth into your heart and send that to the love of that aspect of yourself. Just keep pumping, smile like an idiot. You don't want to get trapped in that pain. <laughs> and just keep pumping this beautiful love like morphine into this baby or into this aspect of you. Yeah, and keep pumping till this one is smiling. And later on you can go, you know, on another run for a second or third lifetime. Mm -hmm. Now let's call in that aspect from a past lifetime that is most influencing you in control issues. Amen. And ask, is there more than one, yes or no? And most likely there are more than one. Uh -huh. Now ask, how many are affecting you in total? And now ask, how many of them are aspects of your own soul? Then now ask the most important one of them to please step forward now. Amen. And send some love if you can. Is this a man or is this a woman? So is this a man, yes or no? And you can ask two times in a row or three times in a row, no big deal. Now, did this one die a natural death? Yes or no? And how did it die? Mm -hmm. And let's ask now what is the cause for over controlling or under controlling? Did this one get in trouble with tradition? Does this one still affect you with fear because of a past life mistake? You know, maybe not being careful enough, yes or no? Okay, and now ask how many of those affecting you with control issues are strangers, you know, hitchhikers, these are ghosts from other people's soul. How many of them are strangers? Please let us know. Mm -hmm. 
I now ask the most important one to please step forward. Amen. Is this a man? Yes or no? Is this a woman? Yes or no? Did this one die a natural death? How did it die? And what is the cause for over-controlling or under-controlling? Was there conflict with tradition? Did this one do any vows that are still affecting you and what are those? Is there still any fear because of this past life trauma? Or where you made a mistake, maybe not careful enough? Yes or no? And what is in particular the trauma that is still affecting you? Okay, and now we ask, you know, all the traumatized ghosts, you know, of you, of your ancestors, and of your hitchhikers, you know, whether this comes from military, tyrants, and black magicians, you know, or other, you know, professions. Mm -hmm. We ask that all those stuck spirits or ghosts, you know, that are being invoked now, being brought to the Arcturian Ascension Temples. Healing, love, and Ascension Temples, please. Now, Amen. And them there, please, make them feel welcome. And as a sign of goodwill, reunite them with lost loved ones that are also stuck on the astral plane, like lost baby spirits, you know, sweethearts, pets, and so on. Amen. And then please show them the higher as well as the hidden aspects of their incarnation. Please show them what was karma, what was volunteered for life experience or life lesson, and what was sabotage by the dark side. Show them now. Amen. And then please help them to ask for forgiveness as well as to give forgiveness. And when it is difficult for them, just show them, you know, how in past lifetimes they did similar things. Please do so now. Amen. And once they forgive and ask for forgiveness, we ask that absolute souls to please clear any entanglement that still binds them to this astral plane, like vows, contracts, promises, curses, candle magic, black magic, and forms of bindings bombs, booby traps, claws, hooks, cords, chains, and everything else that was not mentioned, but needs to leave their space at this time. Of course, everything for the highest good in divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes. Um, Jesus nod, you had an agreement and smile without interrupting the pumping of love. We also asked for the presence of expert healing teams that act for the highest good in divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes. 
to please transmute any physical, astral, emotional, mental and spiritual trauma to healing energy, wisdom and upgrade us to our divine blueprint as much as possible now. Um, and so be it. Swaha. Just nod your head and smile in agreement without interrupting the pumping of love. And of course, in some areas of your life, you over control and in some areas you lack the control. You know, you control my end at the fridge or you can't shut up when you're supposed to. <laughs> and so let's ask, make sure you smile and you center it in your heart. Let's ask the root cause for the lack of control in your life. Is this mostly coming from this lifetime? Yes or no? And let's ask the lack of control in your life. Does it mostly come from a past life trauma? Yes or no? Okay, now let's ask, what happened in this lifetime to make you a push around? You know, a bitch, something like that, a bitch for others. And let's go to the most important incident. So what happened there? Now, let's just see how this resonates with you. Did you give your power away through vows or promises, maybe to be left alone? Did your power get uh, crushed and bullied away, yes or no? Did you reject power because of responsibility and entanglement? Maybe you were just lazy. <laughs> Take the easy route, yes or no? Or were you maybe disappointed by others and you just gave up you know, to even try to control others. Or if it was something else, listen, please let us know now. Amen. And now call this aspect in front of you and smile and pump love into this one till it's happy, smiling and glowing so much that it will glow in the dark. Hmm? Just go ahead and start pumping, deep breathing, deep smiling, be very affectionate. If you do your job right, um, you know, this aspect should transform now. And become very happy. Okay, so now let's call in the past life aspect that influences you most for under controlling, you know, in your life. You know, the control that could come from your soul.
And actually, um, are there more than one aspect of you, like ghosts, that are affecting you? Yes or no? And if there are more than one, let's ask how many, please? And of course, in this guided meditation, we can only deal with one at a time. So we ask the most important one to step forward now. Amen. Are you a man? Yes or no? Are you a woman? Yes or no? Did you die a natural death? Yes or no? How did you die? And what happened in your life that causes you to under control? Please let me know now. Amen. Were you a woman? Was it tradition that kept you down? Were you a slave or a very low social standing? Yes or no? Are you afraid to take control because of past life mistakes that you made? using your control and power, yes or no? So what happened in that lifetime so that you get pushed around now like a bitch? You know? Just go to the most important incident. You will see it at three. One, two, three. So what happened there? Was your power stolen through black magic? Was your power stolen through contracts and vows, yes or no? Was your power stolen through technology or special curse work, yes or no? Did your power get crushed or bullied away, maybe tortured away, yes or no? Did you reject power because of responsibility or fear of entanglement, sometimes even for spiritual purposes to simplify your life? Were you let down by others and now keep control to yourself? And now smile and just Pump love into the heart of that aspect that is unhappy and trapped with this trauma. Smile. Till it's happy again. Now let's ask. Is your control, you know, issue, over control or under control, affected by strangers? This means ghosts or spirits from others that are not coming from your soul. Yes or no? And let's ask the most important one to please step forward now. Amen. Um, Are you a man? Yes or no? Are you a woman? Yes or no? 
Did you die a natural death? Yes or no? How did you die? Now why are you affecting our control issues? Is this over tradition? Is this over fear? And what happened? Were you abused by black magic? Did, pun, did somebody put you under a submission or what is called a bitch spell, yes or no? Have there been some slave spells or bindings done unto you, yes or no? Have there been some pimp spells put onto you. Let me explain. In my past life regression I find very often that you know the subjects that are forced into prostitution they have a pimp that works with somebody that puts binding spells onto those poor whores so they cannot get away. You know, or that uh, they are afraid to get away and they're also stealing their power and energy. Of course these are dark people. This is a dark business. So, again, are you affected by a pimp spell? Yes or no? It's also asked, was your power storing through technology and harvesting, like bad, demoniac, extraterrestrials? Yes or no? Now, another question. Did you give your power away through vows or promises? Yes or no? And let me just fill this in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Did you surrender to a guru? Yes or no? Did you surrender to a dark master? Yes or no? Did you surrender to a pimp in like razor in face? Yes or no? Did you surrender to a, a secret order or brotherhood? Yes or no? Did you surrender in sexual situations, like rope binding and other kinky stuff, yes or no? Did your power get crushed and bullied away, yes or no? Did you reject that power because of responsibility and entanglement, yes or no? Did things go terribly wrong due to your control and you vowed your power away, yes or no? Did other incarnations decide that the urge for control is the root cause of most evil and therefore let go of their power, yes or no? Were you let down by others and now keep the control for yourself, yes or no? Now what are the most important vows or curses that are affecting that lifetime? Please let us know now. Amen.
and start pumping love into the heart of this unhappy spirit being till it's smiling and happy again and full of love. Amen. And now we ask the divine source and all the divine beings of love and light our ascension team so to say please bring any stuck spirits or ghosts as they are being invoked to the Arcturian love feeling and distinction temples and there please make them feel welcome and reunite them to their lost loved ones that are still stuck on the astral plane like lost baby lovers and pets um, And then please show them the higher aspect of their life as well as the hidden aspects of their incarnation. Please make very clear to them what was karma, what was volunteered or planned for life experience and what was sabotage from the dark side. Uh -huh. And now, please help them with forgiveness. Once they forgive and ask for forgiveness, we ask Absolute Source to please clear any entanglement that still binds them, like vows, contracts, promises, curses, candle magic, black magic, and forms of bindings, bombs, booby traps, claws, hooks, cords, chains, and everything else that was not mentioned but needs to leave this space at this time. Ah. Did you just nod you had an agreement without interrupting the pumping of love? We also asked for the presence of expert teams that work for the highest good and divine harmony and the most brilliant outcomes to please transmit any physical, astral, emotional, mental and spiritual trauma and baggage to healing energy and upgrade us to our divine blueprint as much as possible or to upgrade them to their divine blueprint as much as possible. Just nod you had an agreement without the interrupting of popular love. Um, then we ask Lord Shiva, you know, to please process <laughs> and get rid of what does not work anymore in our life mm -hmm. and bring in the improved version. You know, actually this is Lord Brahma, the aspect of source that creates. And please surprise us in a good way and, you know, give us the latest codes for this, or for DNA and all the other personality traits, so that we have a perfect balance of control and trust now. Um, and smile, have the tongue at your palate, and pull in the love from your crown chakra into your heart, and on the exhale, send you a love up into the heavens as high as you can go. And of course, you know, staying away from control issues, you have to smile and which tunes us into the higher mind. Once you're in your higher mind, but, you know, grounded, um, you will be in harmony. So our purpose right now is to clear all the blocks that are in our crown chakras, you know, through running love with the heavens. Um, and one more time, we asked our spirit guides to clear any resistances and blocks and sabotage like implants, black magic, or just dark energy that has attached there. We like to have this all cleared now as much as possible. Amen. And you just smile and bring in the love from the heavens with your breath into your heart. And on the exhale, you send your love out the top of the head. 
Again, we ask that we get all the helps to stay balanced in our boundaries and our control issues and to stay anchored in our higher mind. You are connected to a higher mind, centered in the heart, and also connected to the Earth God. We thank all those beings that came and helped. And if there are any energies that are still stuck with us, or entities that are still stuck with us, or in our space, in our apartment or house, we like to have those removed now and brought to where they can serve the Creator for the highest good now. Um, we ask that um, all the soul fragments that can return to us now, please be returned to us and integrated with our subtle bodies. Um, then we ask for the latest divine blueprints for us. Um, and once they're all uploaded, we ask that we be surrounded by this powerful aura of love and light that can only be penetrated by love and light. And we ask the angels of love and light to maintain this. Um, and now I will count to three and then you will be back in vacant day consciousness again. One, two, three. You're fully grounded now back in vacant day consciousness. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to this reality. Um, please uh, drink a lot of water after this meditation. If you get a headache, you will have to drink more water. You know, of course, there's a lot of purification going on. And so you will have to upgrade, you know, your water intake or extake. <laughs> and um, as always, you know, if you responded well to this guided meditation, you probably want to try out my other videos or get a personal session with me. Um, definitely subscribe, give me thumbs up and comments, you know, so this videos they can spread and this knowledge can be seen. And um, <clears throat> yeah, keep on smiling, you know, like an idiot. Um, you know, running love with everybody, you know, staying centered in the heart, staying connected with heaven and earth. And, um, you know, when you smile, um, this means you're tuning into your higher mind. You know, as long as you frown, you tune into your animal mind, you know, which is or your instinctual mind, which is full of pain and suffering, which, of course, has to be transformed, you know, with the love that's coming from the higher mind. But you want to stay in the loving part. That's all for today. Um, I love you a long time. Namaste.